rainbows and welcome to the second half of season two of our royal family. I am so excited to be back with this series. I know I took a two week break. Thank you guys for letting me take a break. So if you couldn't tell from the intro, a few years have passed since the last episode. So the intro was just kind of showing you guys some things that have happened. I will just explain things throughout the episode so I don't just talk your ear off in the beginning of this episode. But the second half of this season is going to be a lot of birthdays, a lot of weddings and proposals or proposals then weddings. I guess proposals come first, usually anyway. And then babies, there's gonna be babies being born later in this season or not even later, like we're starting today. We're, we're gonna have a baby be conceived today. So I'm excited for that. And then of course our story stuff, some drama. I've already got it all planned out, so I'm very excited for that. So in this episode to start us off, we are starting at the Willow Creek Palace because Ellis is over. It is his birthday, so he is celebrating with Cornelius and Cornelius's family. He's gonna be aging up into a young adult, and then we're gonna go to the Brindleton Bay Palace, and we're gonna have a birthday party for Frederick, William, and Cedric. And then we are going to the Windenburg Palace because we are going to be having a homecoming ball for Bellatrix. And then we are going to have Han and Airmen to try for a baby, and I'm so excited for that. Too. So if you're excited for this episode, make sure you hit that like button. So again, we are starting here at the Willow Creek Palace. They are finishing up dinner. It is Ellis's birthday, so they're having a birthday dinner for him. So Ellis doesn't enjoy social gatherings like too much, but he just prefers to be with people that he's close with. So Cornelius wanted to do something special for his birthday and his parents said they could have Ellis over for dinner and then they have a cake for him. So he's gonna be aging up to a young adult and then they were doing like game night and stuff too. So yeah, it's been a few years since the last episode. So Ellis has gotten really close with Cornelius's family and they are, they're like another family to Ellis. Also been getting a lot more used to the royal events. Also just trying to educate himself so he can have like things to talk about with people at the events as well. So they are just finishing up dinner now. Also, so I, I made some changes to some of the people's looks, not everybody, but Elena, I did get a new hair for her. So she cut her hair even shorter. So hopefully you guys can tell the difference between her and Juliet a little bit more now. Juliet's hair, I kept the same. I'm just so in love with it. It's so her, so I had to keep it. Also, this hair is by Curbs, by the way. I do get a lot of people asking me that. I don't think it's public on their Patreon yet though, but the link to it is on my Pinterest board. So yeah, so it's a little bit later now. It's like 2 a.m. They've been talking at the dinner table for a long time. They were having their game night earlier too. I am now, we're gonna have the cake come here and we are going to have Ellis blow out the candles. I just added him to the household just so it was easier to control him. So let's go ahead and have Ellis age up into a young adult. I'm so excited. I think Cornelius and Arya, they're gonna be aging up into young adults in the next episode actually. So yay, Ellis is aging up into a young adult. Okay, so he is physically gifted and he's a goofball. You know what, there's this custom trait that he was supposed to have. He was supposed to be handy, but for some reason that's not showing up for me. But he is handy, that's, that's another thing. I mean, so he's just good at fixing things and stuff. I am also going to give him then the compassionate trait so he can easily empathize with people. So that just means though, whenever Cornelius is feeling stressed, he's also sharing that emotional burden with him too. But yay, okay, he's now a young adult. Oh, also Cornelius and his father's relationship has grown so much. He's really been working his butt off to prepare to be the monarch one day. And he's been spending a lot of time with his dad because of that too. So they've gotten really close, which I think is super sweet. Okay, we're going to call everyone to the meal for the cake. So yeah, I mean, in the last episode, you guys saw that Ellis was feeling a little bit stressed at the wedding, at Han and Aramis's wedding, just because he wasn't really used to the royal events. But again, he's kind of just been like educating himself so he has an easier time talking to people at the events and he's gotten used to them by now. They're still not like his favorite thing in the world, but he's definitely getting used to them. And I think he might be starting to like them a little bit more too. He just wants to be like all in, like him and Cornelius, they love each other so much. They've been dating for a few years now. It's been a while. And I really think with Ellis, like he's just like, Cornelius is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. I want to do this for him. I want to make sure that I'm there for him when he needs me and I'm there to support him at these events and stuff. But everyone else, oh, he went to go sit by Genevieve. I think him and Genevieve have gotten really close too. That reminds me guys. I've mentioned the Royal Family community on the Amino app a few episodes ago. 
ago. Again, I definitely recommend checking it out though because some people have been writing one shots and fan fiction about the series and they're really good. Like I enjoy them so much. Some of them capture the relationships perfectly. They're written by several people. One person in particular, her name is Lauren. She writes a lot about Cornelius and Ellis and she captures the relationships between like Genevieve and Cornelius and Genevieve and Ellis and just like the whole family dynamic really well. It's like all these details that I wish I could get more in depth with, but I like can't always just because we have so many characters that I have to get to. So I definitely recommend going to check that out on the Amino app. I'll put that information in the description below. She also is posting her stories on Wattpad, which is also an app if you don't know that. And her username on there is Laura Loves Everything. So I will also put that information in the description below if you want to check that out on there. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that because she really covers how like Genevieve is so thankful for Ellis. Like the whole family's so thankful for Ellis and what he's done for Cornelius. They've all gotten really close. And then Juliet and Manuel, they're still dating. They're really cute. She was there for him the entire time during him mourning his father. And so was Elena and Takashi. They're still dating too. I mentioned this in the last episode, but I did post on my Instagram. There were five different parts of a in mourning post of the Oasis Springs royal family. So you could see how each of them were going through the mourning process. So I'll link those again in the description below if you want to check those out. And then something you might not have caught in the intro is that they did build a sort of like a mausoleum where Philip is buried, where they ended up burying his mother too. His mother passed away a while ago. She was buried somewhere else, but they brought her to be buried next to Philip. That's where Nea is gonna be buried. That's where the whole royal family is going to be buried. They also have moved back into their own palace. They have a few different palaces, but their main palace, they've moved back in. Everything was renovated and fixed up after the fire. But yeah, we'll definitely get to see the Oasis Springs royal family later on in this episode. And Genevieve has still been working on her studies. So she just really loves studying different cultures. She really wants to travel the world. So I think that's going to be something she does when she turns into a young adult. So yeah, now they're just dancing. Ellis has turned into a young adult. Cornelius will be turning into a young adult in the next episode. So yeah, okay, we're gonna go ahead and move on. We will see them all later. They're gonna come to the ball later too. Okay, so we're now at the Brindleton Bay Royal Palace because we are having a birthday party for Cedric, Frederick, and William. I actually did realize too, Nephthys or Sissy, she is supposed to be a child already. She's actually a little bit older than Cedric. So we'll just say this is a conjoined birthday party for her too. So just some updates since the last episode. So so Zamora and Cayman, they have told Sissy that Zamora is not her biological mother, but I don't think they, like, she's not old enough to quite understand it yet. So they are waiting until she gets a little bit older. So I think when she's a child, they can have a sit down talk with her and explain it to her. What they decided to tell her is that her biological mother couldn't take care of her. I don't think they wanted to go into the details of like their father had an affair and like that whole thing that happened. Just cause that part I think is a little bit more complicated and like she'll probably end up asking questions later. I think they're gonna wait till like she gets to that age to where she is asking the questions and to where she might understand it a little bit better. But as you guys saw from the intro, Cayman and Zamora, the relationship has gotten a lot better. They were going to to couples therapy and that's been helping them a lot. And Zamora really loves Sissy too. And also Elon and Adric, they love her too. And I think they're gonna become really overprotective brothers too. So we'll see what she's like a little bit more when she ages up. But we've started the birthday party. So people are still tr kind of trickling in. We have most of the kids here. We have Nani and Frederick, of course. We have Jessica. So Jessica's not gonna be aging up into a teen for a little bit more time. But her and Frederick are still really close. So obviously we'll have to wait till she's a teen before they actually go out or anything like that. But yeah, they've been best friends for years and they definitely have crushes on each other. But Frederick is going to be a teenager first. We have Sissy right over here. Cedric is, <gasps> Cedric's right here. Oh my God. Oh, and then Charles is here too. So yeah, as you guys saw, Charles has graduated. Fallon should actually be here too. So Fallon's visiting. Uh, Bellatrix is here as well. So the birthday party's so early in the morning because the homecoming ball is going to be later tonight. But of course this is Bellatrix and Charles's nephew's birthday party. So they're here. And then we have Abraham here, Diana's boyfriend. So they've gotten really close. They've been dating for a few years by now too. But yeah, Cedric, oh my gosh, I don't want him to age up you guys. He must, unfortunately, look at him, Bob. Oh, okay, now he's frustrated. He's a little bit angry. Oh, there's Fallon. So Fallon and Charles, they have graduated um, the other undergraduate and then they are still at Brychester. They moved in together and Charles and Fallon are 
still living in Brightchester because they're both getting their masters. So they'll be there for a little bit longer. And then Lily is here too. So Makai is also here. So Lily and Makai, Lily moved in with Makai and Jessica. I think Makai might be thinking of proposing to her soon. Jessica's been pushing him so much to propose so they can get married and they can give her siblings. He'll probably do that pretty soon, maybe in the next episode. But Bellatrix is planning on proposing to Samaria at the homecoming ball, at her homecoming ball. So Samaria is still a, she's in the teenager phase. Technically she's 19. So Bellatrix and Samaria have talked about having a long engagement. So they would be engaged for a few years. And then as soon as Samaria turns into a young adult, then they would get married. Bellatrix has still been in Strangerville. She's been back and forth, but after she defeated the mother plant in the miniseries, she was able to actually come back home and see Samaria, but she still had to be in Strangerville to help like clean up and finish up the mission technically. So she's been in Strangerville, but now she's come home. So tonight they're celebrating that and they're having the ball for her. And then she pulled some strings. So she'll be living in Sulani, but Samaria is not going to move in with her until they get married, but they'll be close to each other. So that's good. She'll probably just stay with her mom and Diana in Windenburg though for a little bit. But yeah, okay, we should go ahead and blow out the candles before I keep talking because I will keep talking for a while. Um, I'm going to have Frederick blow out the candles first. So why don't we put this over here? So Frederick's gonna blow out the candles and then we're going to have William blow out the, wait, where's William? Oh no, he should be here. Okay, if he's not here, I'll teleport him, but he, he should be here. Then we have Alice May here. She's definitely the younger one out of all these kids. So she will still not be aging up for a few more episodes. But okay, Frederick is going to blow out the candles and then William's gonna blow out the candles. Oh, and then I need to get Sissy to blow out the candles and then Cedric to blow out the candles. Okay, but yes, Frederick is aging up into a teenager. So yeah, Frederick and William are gonna be the first to be teens. Okay, so he is, he's an overachiever, so that's good. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a random trait. We're going to do, oh, naturally, wow. I think Frederick's going to be a really good monarch then. Um, what, I don't, I don't know what to put for this. Um, knowledge, I guess, maybe Renaissance Sim, good at many things since he's an overachiever. Okay, oh gosh, all right, we're gonna fix, I'm gonna just come up with a temporary outfit after we age up everyone, and then we'll actually do his whole makeover and stuff on the streams coming up in the next few days. Okay, there's William, William's right here. So we're eyeing the birthday of candles again, and then we're going to age up William. Okay, William is just blown out the candles. Oh God, yep, that outfit's a little bit ridiculous. Oh my God, he looks, okay, I know this outfit is so ridiculous, so please ignore. He looks exactly like Kellen. <gasps> oh, that's so, oh my gosh, I love that. Okay, okay, so next we're supposed to have Sissy and Cedric age up. However, I know I'm supposed to say like help out the candles or something like that, but that's not an option. Um, So in that case, I might just have to use MC Command Center to age him up, which is, oh my God. Oh my God, she's making a huge mess. Oh no. Is she gonna be a troublemaker? Oh no. Okay, well, yeah. All right, I'm gonna use MC Command Center to age her up. We will just have to pretend that she has blown out the candles. Okay, so she is a child. Oh, all right, there we go. Okay, there she is. All right, we gotta give her a little bit of a makeover too. And then say, oh, I wanna age up Cedric, but I wanna like actually see him age up. Same thing with Sissy. I wish I got to see her age up too. Oh, oh, she had to introduce herself to them. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you guys had to see Sissy age up that way, but she's a child now. And then Cedric's turn. So she had to have had like a little bit of a relationship with them. I mean, technically she knows Cedric. It's her cousin's son. Okay, but Sadira is going to help Cedric blow out the candles and he's going to become a child. Okay, but he's aging up. He just blew out the candles. Oh gosh, okay, his hair. Ooh. Oh, he's so cute. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm going to um, fix up their outfits just a little bit so I can just show you what they look like, like an idea of what they look like really quickly. All right, so I moved all the kiddos that I needed to change into just this one house just so it would be easier. So I guess I'll just line them up so you guys can see real quick. So this is William. Look how cute he is, you guys. He's adorable. Um, Cedric is so cute. Like, why am I not surprised though? He was the cutest toddler. He's I think he just has these really big eyes. I think he has Amira's eyes. They're huge. And then this, oh, I don't know why he's so moody, but this is Frederick. He's just like looking around. Okay, there he is, there he's smiling. But that's Frederick. He looks a lot like Johan. Oh my, oh, he's smiling right at us. And this is Sissy right here. She's really cute. I need to find more dresses for her. I've yet to find anything. So hopefully I can find something. But yeah, that's Sissy. So that's all of our birthday kiddos. They've all aged up. We've had a birthday party for Four people, that's crazy. Oh my God, their cat is eating the cake. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. 
Lecture about eating human food. Oh, okay, apparently Sissy's gonna do that. I have to move them all back into their house, but you know. And then Samaria's here too. I changed up her hair a little bit also. She doesn't know that Bellatrix is gonna be proposing to her tonight, so I'm so excited for that. And then we have Lord Ian here, and then Prince James is here somewhere. But yeah, okay, we still have a few more things to do in this episode, so let's go ahead and move on. We had a fun little birthday party. They got to celebrate. We got to see some of the people here, but we're gonna see even more people at Bellatrix's homecoming ball. So yeah, okay, let's go. All right, so we are now here for Bellatrix's homecoming ball. So it's really special. She's been gone for a very long time. I know it's probably not realistic that she was gone for so long, but just for story purposes, she was gone for a while. And this is also a big event because I've mentioned before, but Aisha, she was interested in creating her own fashion line. So after her father died, she kind of just distracted herself with work and designing this fashion line. And she wanted to dedicate it to Philip, her father because she's just the type of person she mourns a little bit differently. She just wanted to drown herself at work and not think about it and distract herself. That's what she ended up doing. So it's been a few years, but she has created this fashion line and it's, I guess, debuting or like showing itself off at this event. Technically, she would do like a fashion show or something like that. So we'll say that she's done one before, but I guess after the fashion shows when the royals got interested in it. So the creator that I'm using for her fashion line is Mabley Store. So I'll link their Patreon in the description below. I get most of their stuff on Patreon. So it's for women's formal wear. So like luxury wear basically. So her sisters, Aria, Kimberly, Nea, they're wearing it. Araminta's wearing one of her dresses. Elena and Juliet, of course, her best friends, they're wearing her dresses as well. So I will just kind of show it to you guys. Oh, Samara's wearing one of her outfits too. So this is Nea. She's doing her little slippery walk right now. This is one of Aisha's dresses. Nea's really proud of Aisha. She loves that she dedicated her fashion line to her father. It's been a really hard past few years for her, but her kids have been really helping her through things. Of course, she still misses Philip. She thinks about him a lot, but she's doing a lot better now. And this is Samaria. I don't know why she's feeling sad. Maybe because Bellatrix isn't here yet. But yeah, this is one of Aisha's designs too. So it's this yellow jumpsuit. I thought it looked so good on her. Oh, Bellatrix is here. Bellatrix is here. Okay. This is not one of Aisha's outfits, but this also looks really good on her. And then Zamora's wearing one too. And then yeah, Natalia's wearing one too. I just want to show you guys these dresses. Arya, she's irritated right now, but Arya is wearing one. I should have had them do like a fashion show or something just so you guys can see. Oh, okay. So they're standing. So Elena, this is one of hers too. She's got this pretty blue one. Juliet has another. Oh my God, they're gorgeous. They're so pretty. Again, I will link their profile in the description below. And then Kimmy's wearing one too. She looks so good. And then Makan is here. Oh, and there's Corn Boy. He's here. And then Araminta's wearing one too. Oh, there she is. <gasps> All right, so this is Araminta's dress. So I tried to put a cover up underneath and it didn't look as good. Probably she wouldn't be wearing something so exposed, but you know, she looks amazing. This hair is by the same creator as Juliet's hair. It's by Curbs. So I will just link Curbs' profile in the description below their Patreon. And I'll put this hair on my Pinterest board as well. She didn't cut her hair. Her hair is still just as long, but for this, when it's curled, it's just shorter. She looks incredible. They all look so good. But Araminta, she just looks like a goddess. She's so pretty. Actually, Fallon's here too. This might be the first time Fallon and, oh, not announced as heir, no. This might be the first time that Fallon and Araminta are meeting. And Han's here too. You know what? Her and Han are definitely trying for a baby after this because she looks so good. I cannot imagine how much Han is blushing right now. He probably saw her and like his jaw dropped. I'm probably also going to be posting on Instagram some like photo shoots of each of them. So they're going to just help Aisha by like modeling her clothes for her. So yeah, and that's just like a small little detail, but I just love it so much. Genevieve, I couldn't, I don't know. I don't think they're really Genevieve's style. She's wearing Cora's dress. She's wearing her grandmother's dress. Also... Guys, Princess Anna, she did pass away. She passed away during the time skip. She was like close to it in the last episode, but yeah, she did pass away, unfortunately. So they did a nice funeral for her. It was really sad. Amira was really sad. Everyone was sad. Anna was Amira's favorite aunt too. Like obviously she loved Cora a lot, but she looked up to Anna growing up so much. So yeah, unfortunately she did pass away. I'm gonna miss her so much. I love Princess Anna. Okay, so yeah, let's, uh, we'll get to Bellatrix and Samara in a second. I think Bellatrix is getting a little bit nervous because she is going to prepare Posed to Samaria. And I think all of Samaria's family knows that. They are all here. But I'm so excited for that. Okay, Gabriel, go find. Where's Arya? Oh, I don't know where she is right now. Um, okay, well, why don't you just go grab a drink for a second? Oh, wait. Oh, Arya. Oh, Arya and Kimmy were over here. Um, maybe you shouldn't flirt with her in front of everybody. Go ask her about her day. See how she's doing. Gosh, they're so pretty. Where's Aisha? 
Aisha's the creator of all these dresses. Where is she? Oh, is Bellatrix? She's, oh, she's just taking a breather, I think, before she goes to propose. And then here's Princess Diana. She's all her. Okay, I'm gonna control from Princess Diana so she can go talk to Abraham. They're so cute. So her and her mom and Amira, they've officially made the foundation under King Henry's name. It's the foundation to help the elderly and people who are disabled. So that's kind of what she's been up to. And then her and Abraham, they love painting together. They love playing music together. She's taught him how to play the piano. He's taught her how to paint a little bit better. They're just so cute. Okay, guys, here's Aisha. I'm gonna have her talk to people now. Besides Bellatrix, she's kind of the special person for tonight. Oh God, I need to change Kellen. Oh, guys, Aramid and Han, they're just like in here by themselves away from everybody. They're just looking at each other. They're so cute. Oh my gosh, they're adorable. They're so in love with each other. I posted so many pictures of their honeymoon on my Instagram too. So if you wanna see that, my Instagram's in the description below. They had a really good time. It's been a few years since they got married. And then if you missed it in the intro, Azumi is pregnant. So Akio and Azumi are expecting a baby. Okay, they got interrupted. That's fine. Oh, and then Kimmy and Makana, they snuck out to go stargaze. Makana's been doing a lot better. He has been working really hard, just like Cornelius preparing to be the monarch. Kimmy has been helping him study a lot too. So she always sits in with him and like just quizzes him, like anything he needs, any help that he needs. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. She's so supportive. I love it so much. And he's been there for her while she's been mourning her father's death. So they're just like there for each other so much. And they're so cute. Makana's been so much better about opening up to her too. He's a lot better at parties, but I just love because they're both loners and this is how they met. They actually met here or like that's how they started talking. But because they both were trying to get away from a party and that's exactly what they're doing now. That's so cute. They just needed time alone. That's adorable. Okay, okay. So Araminta is saying, Charles here, so she's gonna go talk to him. So then I need her to meet Fallon for the first time. So I'm gonna have Araminta, she's gonna do a polite introduction to Fallon. I th it should be fine, Araminta's so sweet. I'm sure Fallon already knows about Araminta. Okay, Araminta's walking over to introduce herself. This is the first time that they're meeting. Oh, it's actually cool to see them do a handshake like that. I don't know why. Okay, cool. Oh my, whoa, what? Uh, suddenly they're best friends. I, I don't know what happened. It just automatically filled up the friendship bar. Okay, well, apparently they're hitting it off. I, I mean, that's good, that's great. I just find that very funny, <laughs> but okay, cool. Well, she's met Fallon. And then trying to think, oh, we got Ariana. Thomas is working technically, so they can't really interact that much, but you know, Ariana's like 20 at this point. So I think when she turns into a young adult, Thomas is going to propose to her. They've been dating for a few years. Her parents like him. I think he's going to ask for their blessing before he proposes. Oh, and then Natalia and Elon, they snuck off together over here. They're so cute. So Natalia's relationship with their mother has definitely gone downhill since she stood up to her since I mentioned that in the last episode. I think her mother is warming up to the fact that like, yes, he's still a prince. So like she doesn't have to be queen. Like that's a huge step for them. I mean, she shouldn't be thinking about that aspect anyway, but she does, that's just how she is. But yeah, they are super cute. They're a little bit on the younger side of the teenagers though. So they won't be aging up for a while. However, Adric is a young adult already. I have to find him. Oh, okay, there he is. Oh, wait. Okay, so this right here, so Bellatrix has two friends that's come here. I have to get her to propose soon. We've been here for so long. Um, but this is her friend, Desta. So she was not in the miniseries. She was not staying at the same place that Bellatrix was, but her friend Erica James was. So Erica and Desta, they're both going to be stationed in Sulani with Bellatrix. So they're just both here. They've just gotten to become really good friends. So Desta is made by, her name is Brie. Her gallery ID is Buzz Dury. So it's B-U-Z-Z-D-U. RRI. I'll put that in the description below. But it looks like her and Adric are cloud gazing together and hitting it off a little bit. So maybe that could be a thing. She's super cute. She has dimples. It's adorable. Okay, I really, I we need to go. It's daylight already. Pretend it's not. But yeah, I, I know we didn't get to see like all of the couples, but I mean, we have the rest of the series to see all of them, so it's fine. All right, so Samaria and Bellatrix. So Bellatrix is just telling everyone, thank you so much for being here. Everyone's trying to gather around, so we'll see how this goes. Oh, Fallon just stepped right in front of her. Yeah, Bellatrix is just telling everyone that she's so thankful that they're here and that she's thankful for her family and friends for supporting her while she was gone. She couldn't have done it without them, especially Samaria. She could not have done it without Samaria and her support. She's saying how much she loves Samaria and that she wants to spend the rest of her life 
life with Samaria. And she's gonna propose to her and ask her to marry her. And they're so sweet. Samaria said yes. Oh my gosh. They're so cute. They're engaged. I'm so happy for them, you guys. I, gosh, I wish I could get everybody to just look at them because that would have been so much sweeter. I can't do the Machinima proposals for everyone. I usually just do the Machinimas for like the monarchs and the heirs and stuff. But I think this way is really sweet. Just Bellatrix proposing in front of all the family and friends, everyone supporting them. Makan is so happy for them. He's so happy for them. It's so sweet. He's like crying happy tears. Everyone, they're crying happy tears. That's so cute. Yay, everyone's celebrating. I wonder if we could do like a toast or something. That would be cool. All Leilon is hugging Bellatrix and congratulating her too. That's so sweet. Okay, all right. So yeah, they're gonna celebrate. It's the next day already. They've, we've been at this ball forever. Oh, Han just walked in shirtless. Let All right, he's, well, you know what? We're gonna go see Han and Araminta next. They are going to be trying for a baby. So maybe they should just go. Oh gosh, she looks so good. They're such an attractive couple. I can't take it. All right, we're gonna go to Han and Araminta because they're gonna try for a baby. So let's go. All right, so we are back at the Glimmerbrook Royal Palace. Araminta and Han have just gotten back from Bellatrix's homecoming ball. They are flirting. They're super cute, both. Mei Lin and Takashi are not here right now. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. They're so cute. But yeah, they are going to try for a baby, you guys. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for their children. Oh my gosh. He's blushing so much. I'm so excited. Okay, we'll let them do that. He's blushing so hard. So while they're doing that, I did see a lot of people asking about Anya. So I will just say, don't expect to see her anytime soon. I just want to let you guys know that because there were a lot of people asking. She's banished. She's not allowed in Guangxi or any of the Alliance Kingdoms. So yeah, don't expect to see her anytime soon. I just want to let the people know that for those who are asking. All right, but they are done. So I'm going to have Araminta take a pregnancy test. I'm so excited. Guys, she's pregnant. Araminta's pregnant. Oh my God. I'm so excited for their baby. I'm so excited for pregnancy photos too. Oh my gosh. Oh, they're so cute. Wait. All right. I'm going to end this episode here. We covered a lot in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you're as excited as I am for everyone's stories and the babies and the weddings and the proposals and the birthdays. It's going to be a lot of fun. I do already have Araminta and Han's baby's names picked out. I know a lot of you guys like to leave name suggestions. I do have a very long list, but you are always welcome to leave baby name suggestions that I can add to my list. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!